we're going to have an exciting 36 hours of a car stealth camping and a bit of a air flight travel. At the moment, I'm on the uh, A55 heading towards Manchester Airport uh, from Sheffield. I left Sheffield uh, just over an hour ago. The plan is, further up this road here, we're going to pull off and find a quiet spot to stealth camp um, tonight. I already know of a spot that I've already wrecked, so hopefully that should be okay. So we're going to stealth camp there tonight. Hopefully, if I go to bed early, go to sleep, I should get a good six or seven hours sleeping, and then we're up early at 3.30 in the morning, drive to Terminal 1, Manchester Airport, and uh, we've got a three, sorry, we've got a 6.30 flight to Barcelona. So hopefully that'll give us all day in Barcelona, and then it's back tomorrow night, it's a late flight back, I don't think we land till about 11.30, no, about 11 o'clock at night, uh, and then it's just a matter of driving back from Terminal 1 to uh, this little um, quiet uh, lay-by I found, and we're going to stealth camp again tomorrow night. Uh, so, yep, yeah, it's looking... Look, uh, I'm looking forward to an exciting uh, little trip. At the end of the day, um, we've got two stealth camps and um, a day trip in Barcelona. Can't be bad, can it? Anyway, a little bit further up here, we're going to pull off. So just down here, I wrecked a little lay-by which um, look the ideal place to stealth camp. Only five minutes from the airport, but it looks like I've been beaten to it. It's all parked up. Well, I didn't expect that, so it looks like we're gonna have to find somewhere else now. Ah, well. Well, I'm pleased to say I've got parked up for the night. I circled around this area a couple of times and here. Luckily, somebody went and I managed to get my car slotted in at the front. But uh, there were very few other places to park in the area. So yeah, I was lucky to get in here. But the car is in full stealth mode now. I've got all my um, window screens on and uh, it's all ready to, to get in really. I'll try and give you a quick look at it from the outside. So that's my little Peugeot 208, just parked up in a lay-by. Who would know anybody was actually in there? All hidden away in the back of my car. It's, what is it? Oh, it's about 20 past six, so it's just gone dark outside. Before I left Sheffield, I had a really big meal around, uh, probably around three o'clock. So I won't be doing any cooking. Uh, it's a bit too much hassle, that, uh, especially on a big trip like this. But we'll make a... Uh, probably a couple of hot drinks so I'll be using my induction hob and I'll I'll show you that in a little bit I do feel safe and secure in here I can so that's all my doors locked I don't have an alarm in here I know a few people have said what you do with the alarm I don't have one I, I suppose it's only a basic car but that's locked all the doors I have opened the window pulled the handle you can't open anything and the only giveaway is uh, when you click that fob it blinks the indicators so you are if you are properly stealth camping in somewhere you shouldn't be it's a bit of a giveaway but I don't know any way of uh, cancelling that. Uh, I think there's a, a method, but it's very complicated. 
So I just accept the indicators will blink when I lock the car. I've cracked open all four windows slightly, probably about 20 mil, 25 mil, something like that. So that should give some ventilation, um, avoid misting up the windows. But we'll have to see how it goes. If you drive past the car and the windows are all misted up, you know somebody's in there. So it is a giveaway. It works a bit, but not fully. So if anybody's got any tips on reducing condensation, I will uh, will be grateful of that. Uh, I did try a bit of a fan. It did clear them a bit, but you have to keep running the fan. So it weren't wasn't that practical. But uh, sometimes uh, the weather conditions, if you get a lot of dew on the windows anyway on the outside, it don't really matter because you can't notice it. But I'll, I'll give you a quick look round before uh, I do anything else. Uh, that's looking towards the rear of the car. And you see the far left hand corner. That's sort of where you could see my kitchen area. There's my kettle, various pots, storage box with water and breakfast and stuff. And at the side of that, I've managed to squash in uh, or to store the induction hob on my tray. So that gives me a good storage area. I'm just looking down on what will be, it can be seating area or it can be my cooking area where I can set my uh, induction hob up. We'll have a look the other way now. I'm looking the other way. That's the passenger seat pushed back and that's basically where my pillar and my head will go when I sleep. Central post and then quite a bit of storage area in that little cabinet where you keep all your little bits like glasses, keys, phone etc. So not a, a big space but it's adequate and I've got everything in I need. Now a lot of people have asked me, is there enough room to sleep in here? Well, yes, there is. I'm five foot nine tall. With this passenger seat pushed right forward, it gives you about an extra foot and it's a sort of support for your pillar. So yeah, I have got enough room. I can, a bit, all right, if I lay slightly diagonal, I can lay flat out. Not that you always sleep like that, but there is enough room and I've got to admit, I've had some of the most comfortable and longest night's sleep ever. Perhaps not the most comfortable, but some fantastic six or seven hours sleep. And I don't normally do that at home. So yeah, there is enough room and it is very comfortable. And I know some of you will ask yourself, why don't you sleep at the airport itself in the car park? Why sleep remote? Well, let's say me and my wife probably use Manchester Airport at least six or more times a year. To sleep in the car park at the airport is not allowed. There's a lot of security and police. And if the fact I put it this on YouTube, I would be advertising to the authorities what I was doing by sleeping in the airport car parks. And if I was to get banned from Manchester airport car parks, it would not go down very well at home and I would be in an awful lot of trouble. So that's basically why I don't sleep at the airport car parks. I'm sleeping re remote, so I'm not doing anything wrong as far as Manchester airport are concerned. Now something else I get asked a lot is why do these one day trips to Europe? Well, most of my family and most of my friends can't understand why I do these one day trips. But basically, I love the travel. So the main reason is for the travel. It's also for the, the fun and the adventure of going to different places. 
It's something I've always loved doing. It's like being young again. Not a care in the world and no responsibility. I'm not responsible for anybody but myself. If it goes wrong and I miss the plane, so what? I'll sort it out. I'll get home eventually. But it, it's that. It's uh, not a care in the world side of it. And I just love the adventure side of it. It's not something only young people do. Anybody could do it. And it, it just... I just love it. You've got to think... You've, you've got to stay young and your thoughts. If you think old, your body will soon follow that. So you've always got to think young. Got to think young all the time and carry on as if you were 19 in your head. I think a lot of getting old is in your head. So if you can think young, you'll hopefully stay young. I think I'm going to get the induction hob out and we'll, uh, we'll make a hot drink. Um, I'm going to try and get to sleep as early as possible. Um, try and uh, get a bit of uh, a decent sleep as we have got to get up at 3.30 in the morning. So we'll get the induction hob set up and I uh, think I'll have a, a drink of hot chocolate. Right, I'll have to unplug my electric blanket to... Right, that's the hob on, so I'll, I'll just sort out uh, what I'm having. Not as easy to set up as gas, but I feel it is a lot safer when you're enclosed in a car. A lot cleaner, a lot safer, um, and it was fun setting the electrical system up to run it. This is a battery monitor with the induction hob running. As you can see, it's not a constant load. It drops down to around 200 watts and then gradually climbs back up to 1500 watts and then cycles up and down during the uh, cooking process, warming process. To boil probably a pint of water, it'll take about, say, three, three or four amp hours of capacity. And um, you can look at the size of the battery, 170 amp hours. So uh, I could boil a lot of water and uh, do quite a bit of cooking with the capacity I've got in the battery. I think we can say that's boiling. I don't want to steam the place up and cause more condensation drop the milk so hopefully this will induce a bit of sleep Another thing I wanted to talk about was car camping and drinking. While you've got these ignition keys with you, you are liable for drink driving if you're in a car and you've had too much to drink. And for me, part of the fun of these trips is, is having a drink. It's wandering around, calling in bars and having various drinks. But I realise with the car camping, I can't do that. But I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on it because does that mean all these people with camper vans, they don't drink? You see them parked up all over. So you take it that none of the people drink or if you've got a caravan, do you not drink? Is that, do you all come under the same law? So I'd be interested to Hear your thoughts on of it, of it, on it, and if you have any ideas of getting round it, I don't think there is. 
I've heard people say I hand the keys to somebody else, I lock them away in a box. I don't think it would stand up with the police. But I accept while I'm car camping, I can't drink. Well, I, I, I wouldn't say I can't drink. My plan is for tomorrow, I'll probably, I'll be in Manchester airport probably off four in the morning. So I reckon I can have a drink between half four I'm probably just after lunchtime. I ain't going to be drinking much. I'm, I'm travelling. And then I've got probably a good 10 hours before I have to drive the car. So it's it's well over the, the time for being sober again. It's like having a, a drink at tea time and getting up next morning to drive. So I'm, obviously you've got to abide by the law. The consequences of drink driving are so severe uh, in every way you look at it. But I'll be glad to hear your thoughts on that. Um, I'm sticking to Coco tonight anyway. Because I will be driving soon or in the early hours of the morning. So when I've drunk that, I'm going to sort of settle down. I've got my mobile phone and a clamp I have here so I can look at TV. It's a I don't feel tired, so it will be difficult to get to sleep, but I'm hoping I'll wind down a little bit and uh, and go to sleep. Uh, these trips, yeah, you have got a bit of adrenaline going. They're all very exciting and that, so it is difficult to calm down. But hopefully, I'll get some sleep and uh, feel a bit more refreshed. Only got 10 minutes to drive to the airport. So I'll bid you good night and I'll I'll see you at half past three in the morning. We're just having a, a look out the window. Uh, I keep hearing a lot of traffic and I think what it is, it's taxis. I keep hearing cars pull up and then go away. So I think this is where all the, the taxis hang about before they get a call. But hopefully, um, give it a couple of hours and they'll have probably all packed in and gone home. I hope so. Good morning there. I didn't really sleep that well. Too much going on in my head. Um, I've probably been in bed eight hours, but I felt I didn't sleep much of it, uh, like I say, it's just too much to think about. Anyway, not much filming this morning, very simple breakfast, a couple of Weetabix, very easy to make, and a cup of coffee. It'll put me on, I certainly ain't paying. 15, 20 quid for a breakfast in Manchester Airport, no way. This will put me on, and then when I get to Barcelona, I'll have, I'll have some more breakfast there. Part of the fun is trying different foods, different drinks, walking around different places. So yeah, I'll be happy to, to get to Spain and have something to eat there. Plenty warm enough. I only had my electric blanket on, lowest setting. I think it's been about 0 degrees out there. I was plenty warm enough in here. Uh, check battery monitor. I've used probably about 15 amp hours. So only about 10% of my battery capacity. All right, I've only made a couple of drinks. Run my electric blanket all night, lighting ain't going to use much, so not use much at all. Oh dear, go wake up now. Anyway, I'll get myself sorted and then we'll make our way to Terminal 1, Manchester Airport and get the car parked up. So, I'll see you on the road.
just driving the short distance to Terminal 1 multi-storey car park. It's around 4 o'clock in the morning. On these trips I, I bring my sort of washing gear etc with me so I can have a wash and do my teeth in the airport. It might wake me up a little bit. Always a relief when the barrier opens up and you, you know the number plate recognition has worked okay. Right, pleased to say we've arrived at Terminal 1. I've parked it on the very top. I find it easier to find at the end of the day. So all we've got to do now is make our way through security and all that lot and get into the departure lounge. So I'll see you in there. Just checking a destination board. I can see my Barcelona flight at 6.30 and that all looks good. Right, we've made it to T1 departures and I thought I might as well have a pint while I can have a drink. It does feel like a party time in here yeah, it's, it's about five o'clock in the morning. Um, it does feel strange. But I thought I'll have a drink this, this morning and uh, might as well make use of the, the bar while I'm here. So I might have a wander around, kill a bit of time and uh, I'll see you when we're on the plane. See you in a bit. It must have been cold last night. Um, looking at that, the de-icing the wings of the aircraft. That even might be our plane. It's 6.15 and we're just boarding our easy jet flight. So, looks like we're on time. Always nice to see a sunrise even better at 30,000 feet. Just beautiful, isn't it? Crossing the Pyrenees now. They look beautiful, all covered in snow. Wow, look at that for a view. It's worth the £40 I paid for this flight just for these fantastic views. At first I thought that was Barcelona down there but I don't think it is. Amazing view though. Pilot's just gonna turn out to sea and go around in a big loop to line the plane up for, for its final uh, approach and landing. You can just make out the snow-capped Pyrenees in the distance. Just amazing views. Right. Finally made it to Barcelona Airport. Uh, I think it's called El Prat of all names. 
Anyway, I'm going to make my way into central Barcelona now. There's a bus behind me, Aero bus. I'm going to catch that and that should take me straight into the city centre. So I'll see you in there, see you in a little bit. I've just got off the bus from the airport in uh, central Barcelona, I think. It's at uh, Placa España. Uh, that's behind me. You can probably see those two towers. Now, what it is, normally on these trips, I would probably walk all day. But I have, about four weeks ago, I hurt my Achilles tendon and it's a bit uh, painful if I walk a long way. So on this one, I'm going to get a tour bus. I booked on that and that'll take me around most of uh, Barcelona or the part of it I want to see and I can get off when I want. So I'll have a little look around here and then uh, I think we'll, uh, we'll look for this tour bus and see where we end up. It's certainly beautiful weather, bright blue sky and sun, um, not that warm, only about 10 degrees. But I reckon in another hour or so, I will have shed this jacket. So I'll see you in a little bit. While looking for this bus stop, I thought uh, I might have another breakfast. Right, just got off the tour bus down by the, um, the harbour, the port. You probably see behind me what is Christopher Columbus uh, monument. That is actually the start of a street known as Ramblas. Uh, from what I've read, it's the most pickpocketed and con artist street in the world. So I think we'll have a walk up and see what we can see. It's certainly a busy street, lots of bars and restaurants, but it feels like any other touristy street feels uh, quite safe. I have got little carabiners on my rucksack and my phone secure in my pocket with a safety pin across the top, so nobody's going to get any of my stuff. But yeah, it feels fine. I hate to think what it would be like in uh, summer. This is Mercado de Bucheri, just off uh, Rambla Boulevard. There's all sorts in this market. Various hams and salamis, cold meats, to sweets and nuts. I've just find I've just found the erotic museum of Barcelona. Well, that's certainly something different. I'm at the end of uh, Rambla Boulevard at uh, Plaza Catalina. It's a perfect place to sit, have a beer and just watch the world go by. Time for my main meal of the day. Patatas bravas to start, steak and roast veg, and creme Catalina to finish. Just lovely. 
that should keep me going for the rest of this trip. Right, we're at Barcelona Sants railway station. Uh, I thought I'll try the train um, to get from Barcelona to the airport. Uh, just as to your knowledge for future time. So hopefully next 10 minutes, we should have the train and I, I should make my way then to the, to the airport. So I'll have, a, I'll have a word with you when I get to the airport. Hi there. Back at Barcelona Airport, uh, where we started earlier this morning. I've got to admit, I am feeling a little weary. Now, I was supposed to be catching the tour buses and not do much walking. Didn't quite work out. I can't help but walk around the little streets. Uh, I've ended up doing 25,000 steps. So that ain't going to do my Achilles tendon much good at all. And I dare say... I'll, uh, I'll feel it in the next couple of days. But you've sometimes just got to push yourself that little bit further and get done what you wanted. I wasn't going to do any less or anything like that just because my me, me ankle was hurting. Um, I'm sure it will be all right and that. But yeah, definitely feeling a bit weary. I won't be doing much more filming tonight. Um, my flight to Manchester ain't till... 10 to 10 tonight and don't land till about 11.30 so I'm going to be shattered when I get back to Manchester I'll have a last word with you then when I, when I get back and then I'm just going to well basically get into the back of my car and boom, I'll be asleep and I, I reckon I will have a good sleep so I'll see you back at Manchester bye for now Just approaching Manchester Airport, where we set off early this morning, about 18 hours ago. So we're just heading back to where we camped um, last night, wasn't it, last night? We'll try the same place again, hopefully I'll get in. Uh, try and remember where it was. Oh, that looks better. I'm gonna get in here. Nobody here apart from a couple of vans. Right, that'll do us fine. Lights out quickly. Well, finally made it back. The plane took off an hour late. So we didn't get back till, I think it was about half 12. Um, 20 minutes going through passport control. So it's actually one o'clock in the morning now, um, later than I anticipated. Uh, so I've basically been up for probably about 21 hours. But I feel, I feel great. I feel pleasantly shattered really. But it's, it's a good feeling. I feel on top of the world. What an adventure we've had. Like, uh, it's, uh, they give me a right buzz, these trips. You can cram so much into one day. It's quite unbelievable. I mean, you could have been sat at home, bit of shopping, doing nothing. Or you could have been stealth camping and flying all over to Spain and wandering all around a, a new city. Um, I know which I'd want to do. So, uh, yeah, this has put me on a right high. It'll keep me like this for several days 
um, or until I plan the next adventure. And I, I'll get more fun out of it. I've got the editing to do and get it get it all ready to put on YouTube. So uh, yeah, fantastic. Uh, what a fantastic day. I just loved it and that. And I've, I haven't actually drunk much. Um, I was bothered because I'd got the car. But I right now I've only had four drinks. I think you you walking, you're on the move, you're wanting to see lots, and I just uh, I knew I couldn't drink much, so I didn't. Um, so yeah, it would have been better if I could have had a little bit more to drink. That that makes me feel even better then. But no, a fantastic trip. And I'm actually gonna end the video now because all I'm gonna do is climb into the back and basically collapse and fall asleep. I ain't doing any filming tonight and I probably won't feel like doing much in the morning. Um, I don't even know what time I might wake up. So, we'll, we'll yeah, we've had, a, we've had a good trip. I think there'll be enough uh, footage here to give quite a long video. I don't really want any more. So, uh, yeah, we'll call it a day, but what a, a fantastic day it was. So... If, uh, let me have a think. Yes, that's it. For the next video, keeping on the theme of these one-day trips, what I thought I might do for the next video, which I get asked a lot about this, is why? Why do I go on these trips? So it's going to be uh, European trips. Why? Uh, what I take. We do a kit list for wild camping. Why not do a, a kit list for... Um, these trips so uh, yeah why do I do it what do I take and where to go I'll come up with some examples of where you can go on a one day trip so all it leaves for me to say is thanks for watching and I'll I'll see you in a few weeks time and we might we might go in the pub shed to do this one and I'll uh, I can tell you all I know about one day European trips. So, thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye then.